God is near. Look for him in your heart. I was thinking about how I noticed when people were worshiping, they were lifting up their hands like they thought they were reaching toward the heavens towards God. And it caused me to think, don't they know that he's right there in their heart? They're reaching the wrong direction. And so I grabbed my pen and I wrote some stuff down. And so I would like to share with you what I wrote here. Why do you lift up your hands to praise God as if you were an unreachable and distant God? Bring your hands down and place them upon your heart where he truly is. Feel the throbbing pulse of his breath right there inside you. Stop reaching for an absent, distant, unknown God and feel his breath within you. You're looking in the wrong direction. You don't see him because you're looking in the wrong place. Fix your gaze upon him reigning on his throne. He isn't out there somewhere. He's inside. He is near. He's in your heart giving you life. And so then I realized that uh, we've got a Bible verse here in Deuteronomy chapter 30, which is saying essentially the same thing. And we look at verses 11 to 14, and it says, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So we see here that this little thought that I had, this poem, is perfectly consistent with Scripture in saying not to think of God as something absent and distant, but right there in, in your very heart. And so this is something that I've noticed, I've been thinking about lately, is just how much people are focusing on something that's not present, whether it's the not present reality of whatever, if it's, if it's eternal life, but you're thinking about, you know, the after death portion of it, where there, there's a lot of people looking for the imminent return of Jesus, and they're going to be looking to the skies for him coming in the clouds. They're looking in the heavens for signs. They're, they're looking outward. And there's just so much where it's being forgotten that there's something right here, very near, very within, very inside, very present, very already fulfilled. And so if you understand that the whole entire message that of the entire Bible is that God provided absolutely positively 100% of everything for us, all of it, everything, it's all been provided for us. He finished the work. He rested on the seventh day to punctuate the fact that he was finished. And him being finished the work, there was nothing either left for us to do either. So it is finished. It's all fulfilled. And the question is whether we trust that. And we know that there's eternal security, that once you believed on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, you are saved. And that can never be taken away from you. But we fail to realize the peace that we can have and the rest that we have right now, right this very second, right today. and. This is where you have to think back to this original question where God says, I gave you absolutely everything you need. Do you trust that? And so when you can continue to realize he's there, he's in your heart, he's within you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He's provided everything that you need. It's all right there. It's all been given to you and it's all finished. Then you have peace now. You have rest now. You have comfort now. These aren't things that are awaiting you being stockpiled for later in an afterlife after you're dead. These are things you have now, today, this very second, this very moment, if you can hear my voice and understand and, and agree, if you can hear my voice right this very second and say, I actually do. God has provided everything for me. I need for nothing. I lack for nothing. I want for nothing. It's all there for me. Then you have rest. You've already entered into his rest. It's not something after you're dead. It's something right now. And so just 
I kind of recognize seeing these people like they are reaching towards this distant God that, that, that their arms are too short to reach. And I'm thinking you're reaching the wrong direction. You're reaching the wrong direction. He's he's right there. He's in your heart. He's the one causing it to pump and circulating that blood. You know, he's giving you the life himself. And you're reaching outside of yourself towards this God that you're putting on a performance for him. Like he's looking down on you and he's right there inside going, I'm the one making your, your blood circulate. So... That's pretty much what I wanted to present here is that I've been thinking a lot about how we're we're ignoring the, the now. We're ignoring what's happening to us right here, right now, right this instant, right this moment. And we're putting it off and, and thinking that everything's stockpiled for after we're dead. And what kind of life is it to live if, if your only hope is after you're dead? I mean, <laughs> it's not much of a good life if the only good part of it is is yet to be found when you're dead. So I'm going to finish with Psalm 62, verses 1, 2, and 5 through 8. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation. And my glory, the rock of my strength, and the refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Amen.